In our society, attitudes about liquor range from one extreme to the other. 40 million adults in the United States believe in complete abstinence. The rest use alcoholic beverages to some extent, including some who are diagnosed as alcoholics. Everyone must make a decision about alcohol. Some make that decision intelligently, based on an understanding both of themselves and of liquor. Others drift aimlessly into habits that can be dangerous and difficult to change. Look, Al, I'm sure I'm positive you won't find a better piece of land in town. Waiter, another round of drinks, please. Oh, no, not for me, thanks. Come on, it's just what we need. The same all around. Look, Al, Steve, this is one of the best deals I've had to offer in a long time. 150 acres right on the main highway. It's ideal for you. It's a pretty good location, Jerry. We'll grant you that. But it's a question of price. Look, Steve, you've got two problems. One of them's floor space, the other's location, right? Yes, but there's a third, Jerry, money. Oh, my gosh, excuse me, I've got to call my fiance. Jerry? Oh, Debbie's expecting us around seven. Well, how soon can you get here? Well, where are you now? No, it's just that we're going to have cocktails there and... No, dear. Yes, I realize it's business. It, it's just that Frank and Debbie are such good friends and... Frankly, I was embarrassed the last time. No, dear, I'm not nagging. Yes. All right, I'll wait for you. All right. Jerry doesn't mean to do things like that, but he doesn't just the same. What did you say, dear? I said, Jerry doesn't mean to do things like that, but he does them just the same. He certainly ruined that last party. Jerry's an awfully nice guy, when he doesn't drink too much. And he loved Julie very much. In a way, I hope they get married, but uh, sometimes I wonder. Maybe marriage is what he needs. Did Julie set any date yet? Not yet. Oh, you? No, thanks. I'll wait for the others. I won't. The day was really rough at the office. Mm, they should be here soon. I think we ought to be at the dinner by nine, don't you? Okay. It's nice Rudy and Dolores can make it tonight. They hardly ever get out anymore. Boy, the hours he puts in. <laughs> I'm sure glad I'm not starting a career in law. Well, I've never heard Dolores complain. She's being an awfully good sport. And the way Rudy's going, they'll soon be making a mint of money. <laughs> I wish I could say that about us. You've all come a long way since college. Mm-hmm. Yes, George is doing pretty well, too. Of course, Doug doesn't have to work. Oh, now that's not fair. Oh, I'm not criticizing. I think it's great marrying the boss's daughter. I'd have done the same thing, only uh, you got to me first. <laughs> oh, now don't let me up. They'll be here in a minute. Oh, it's a little after seven now. I've got things I have. longer, just one. I hate to see you miss an opportunity like this one. The price may seem high right now, but don't forget the railroad is going to put on a spur line. $2,000 an acre is as high as we can go, Jerry. We don't have to tell you that that's big money. We're all wasting time, Jerry. Look, maybe we're wrong. If you really think we are, why don't you write us a letter? Put all the arguments down in black and white. Well, we'll keep you in mind. See you, Jerry. See ya. Bye, Jerry. Take it easy. Yeah, hope you change your mind. I'll write that letter first thing in the morning.
Hi. You better go ahead, honey. Now they're gone, but I've still got a change. I'll meet you there. What's wrong? I told you I'm leaving now. Tell them I got tied up. Why shouldn't I be all right? Nothing's wrong. Don't worry so, honey. I'll be there in a little while. All right, Jerry. A waiter, another drink at my table. Frank and Debbie, their neighbors and their friends, could be almost any group of young Americans from almost any part of the country having a social evening together. For people like them, alcohol often plays a part in relaxation and recreation. Why do people drink or not drink? Do they always know? How important is it for us to know our reasons? What happened? Aren't Jerry and Julie coming? Oh, they'll be along in a minute. I can't imagine Jerry missing a cocktail party if he can help it. He certainly enjoyed the last one. Oh, oh come on, Helen. Don't be so hard on him. Everyone can slip up once in a while. Seems to be happening more than once in a while. Well, in his business, you have to entertain. I can see where someone who does a lot of selling might drink more than we do. Frank, what is selling or entertaining got to do with it? Jerry wasn't entertaining clients before our last party, was he? He may think he has to drink that much for business reasons, but I doubt it. Oh, he's been like this ever since his big deal fell through. Well, it's the same story. Remember when he was bounced off the football team? What happened? He got benched for a couple of games. He lost some of his timing, that's all. Oh, well, it can happen to any good player, and he was a good quarterback. He'd have come back better than ever. But when he was benched for the big game against Western, well, it was just too much for him. What, what did he do? Went out and got plastered. Someone saw him in town. That was the end of his football career. And he hasn't changed a bit. Now, a lot of people have disappointments, but Jerry thinks he can drink his way. Now, that business of entertaining is just an excuse. Well, everyone's different. When I get home from work, I find a drink before dinner helps me relax. Now, maybe that is an excuse, but I'm very happy with the result. <laughs> hey, Doug, you care for one of my special relaxers, huh? You bet, believe I will. You know, I don't know what we're making so much of a fuss about. I mean, as far as drinking is concerned, Frank, I don't see anything wrong with liquor. Not the way we drink, at any rate. I'm only sorry the stuff costs a darn much. <laughs> I like having a good time, and drinking makes you, you know, have more fun. <laughs> yeah, we sure managed to have some good times together. But Rudy is the one who amazes me. He never drinks, yet he seems to enjoy himself as much as anyone else. Say, did you ever touch the stuff, Rudy? <laughs> yeah, I tried, but somehow I just don't like it. I was exposed to liquor when I was young. My folks always had it around. A lot of my friends drank in college. It doesn't bother me to be around people who do drink. After all, I married a very nice drinker. Yeah, you know what amazes me is that Rudy can make just about the best martinis I know of. Well, that's no reflection on yours, Frank. <laughs> no offense taken, ma'am. Uh, speaking of second best martinis, how about another? Well, I'd love one. Love Thank you, darling. I go along with Doug on this business of drinking. Rudy spends so much time on those law books that we don't get out very often. And when we do, well, I like to make the most of it. A couple of drinks will put me in a party mood fast. Me too. More than a couple of drinks will put me out of a party mood fast. Up to that point, I'm fine. I feel like a million bucks. But beyond it, I begin to feel pretty lousy. And what does it do to me the next day? I think that many people take a drink only because others do. It seems to be the custom, so they join in, just to be sociable. I guess I'm one of those people. I drink because Frank does. What, honey? Well, have you ever seen me take a drink without you? No, I guess I haven't. <laughs> well, have you ever seen Frank not take a drink? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now, that's not fair. <laughs> I'll get it. Hey, can I get you something, George? Not for me, thanks. I've had my quarter. Hi, Debbie. Oh, don't you look nice. Thank you. That's a pretty dress you've got on. Oh, thank you. Uh, Jerry got tied up with some people at the office. He went home to change. He'll be along soon. Oh, I meant the linen. Well, now, don't worry about it, dear, because we still have time before we have to leave for dinner. Huh? <laughs> 
Hi, Judy. Where's the boy? Uh, I'm sorry I'm late. Jerry got tied up with some people at the office. He better be along soon. Well, what do you have? Manhattan? Martini? Oh, Manhattan. All right. How about it? Anyone want to refill? The reason some people give for their drinking may be realistic ones. Easy to say and easy to believe. Are there other reasons too? Reasons more deeply associated with a person's feelings about himself and his relations with others? Let's look more closely at Doug. Doug and Helen have been married three years. Doug is friendly and pleasant, easygoing and a little shy. He never really had to fight for what he got. Doug works for his father-in-law. Yes, I like the way you handled the Wilson deal, Doug. Thank you, sir. It was excellent. Dad. Doug and I have been discussing it, and we think he's capable of handling a more responsible position. Helen. Well, it's true. You say you're pleased with his work, and we... Uh, I don't think it's fair to discuss it right now, Helen. No, oh, not at all, Doug. I'm glad you brought it up. I've been thinking of doing something for you for some time. Well, that's very good of you, sir. Not at all, Doug. After all, I have only one daughter, and I want her to be happy. I think you're making. We haven't told you the good news yet. Tell them, dear. Oh, well, I, I've been made district manager. How well, wonderful. Congratulations, Doug. Congratulations, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Doug earned it, and he convinced Dad he deserved it. Well, of course, the fact that I'm Helen's husband has absolutely nothing to do with it, you know. <laughs> well, I think we're all lucky to have such smart husbands. And such smart wives, too. You know that the Garden Club has asked Claudia to act as chairman of their exhibit committee this season? Well, looks like congratulations are in order all around. Oh, no. Only for Doug. It was nice of them to offer, but well, I'm not too familiar with garden exhibitions or getting people to do things. That sort of thing. You could do it. After I've had a couple of these, I think I could too, but that's not the same thing. <laughs> Doing the brain work is really George's department in our family. Claudia, just being oh, no. At a party, Claudia can joke about brain work, but she seems to be convinced of her inability to accept responsibility and make decisions. And this creates problems at home. Peter wants to show you a suit for the party tomorrow. Oh? Oh, come here, son. Let's take a look at you. Well, I think you look fine. Just fine. I'm so glad. How does it feel to be seven? I'm not seven yet. I'll be seven tomorrow. Tomorrow, eh? Well, you're going to look fine. You better save that suit for tomorrow, eh? Yes, dear. Run and change your suit before it gets wrinkled. Shall I have a bath? Not tonight. Tomorrow before the party. Okay. Bye-bye. What do you suppose I can give the children at the party? Oh, you know, the usual stuff. You better get a lot of it, though. You're going to have a pack of hungry kids in your hands. Yes, but what? Ice cream? Cake? Well, sure, that's fine. Ginger ale, soda pop, maybe? I don't know, dear. Whatever you think best. I've been thinking about games for the children. I want to arrange something that they'll all enjoy, but I'm not sure what kind of games they'd really like. I don't know, dear. That's, that's your department. Why don't you ask Peter? Oh, I can't find anything out from him. And another thing. What about prizes for the winners of the games? They all love prizes, but if only the winners get them, then the other children's feelings might be hurt. Do you think we should have prizes just for the winners, or should we get something for all the children? Dear, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. But there's nothing wrong with your judgment. You've got to have more confidence in yourself, honey. Yes, I suppose you're right. Claudia and Doug, like all of us, have minor disappointments and failings. They have doubts about themselves, and sometimes they feel inadequate. But alcohol seems to change these characteristics. We're just going to have to expand our entire advertising campaign, especially out in the West. I know that the business potential is there. I'm just going to have to convince Helen's father that we should go after it. Liquor seems to make Doug more self-confident, and this might be all right if he could be as sure of himself Monday morning at the office as he is Saturday night at a party. But does the temporary self-confidence that liquor lends Doug fool anyone but himself? Now, I happen to know that my husband doesn't know what he's talking about. You see, George, you can't... Disappoint. Claudia said she liked to drink so that she could have fun. But if she needs liquor to make her forget her insecurity and let her have fun, is this a constructive approach to her problem? Could it prove harmful? 
What time we do a dinner? Around nine. Honestly, Debbie, I'm sorry. I can't figure out what's keeping him. Now, don't worry. <sighs> Debbie, sometimes I get so mixed up about that guy, I don't know what to do. Oh, I know the struggle you're going through. Oh, he's so wonderful in so many ways. And, and I adore him, but, but I just can't overlook his irresponsibility, especially when it comes to something like liquor. Oh, sometimes I think it's foolish to let it bother me, especially when there's so much else to appreciate about him. And I know he's no drunk or anything like that. Then we have another incident, like last Saturday night, and I'll get it. Hi, honey. Sorry I'm late. Well, where have you been? Hey, I made it, Frankie boy. I'm here. Hi, Jerry. Say, who's the blonde that lives on this floor? I just came up with her on the elevator, and whoa. Baby, miss me? We've all missed you. We're all ready to go to dinner. Honey, I'm a hard-working man. I've got a rich father-in-law. Oh, hi, Doug. Just kidding, just kidding. How about a drink? That's for me. Uh, I think everybody's just about ready to leave, Jerry. <laughs> I just got here. It won't take me long. I just want to catch a quick one, okay? Oh, we don't want to keep everybody waiting. But while everyone's getting their coat on, I can think of fast one. I'll be there in just a minute. Tell everybody to get the coat on. Something go wrong in the office, Jerry? No. No, nothing's wrong. Not over that little drink. Frank. Debbie, I'm sorry. Look, do you mind if we just stay here for a while? I I'd like to talk to him alone. Oh, sure, Judy. Don't worry about it. We'll see you later, okay? Oh, fine. We'll see you at the... Hey, where's everybody going? I told Frank we'd join them later. I want to talk to you alone. Sure, honey. What about? About your drinking. <laughs> My what? Honey, I just poured myself this one drink. I'm not talking about that one, Jerry. It's after nine. It took you an hour and a half to get here. Now, well, I know you had a business deal. I understand that. And sometimes you can't help me. Really. But, but you phoned me to tell me you were going right home to change. Now, now, you knew everybody was waiting for you. You knew I was waiting for you. But you had to stop and drink, didn't you? Are you talking as if I walked in there staggering drunk or I'm something? I'm not talking about how much you drink, Jerry. I'm talking about why. I love you. I want to marry you, but... But this... This what, time? Irresponsibility. Irresponsibility? When it comes to drinking, yes. You didn't close the deal. You, you were disappointed, so, so you kept on drinking. Well, I... Now, I know. This isn't the first time this has happened. Is this the only way you have of meeting disappointment? Let's drop it, Julie. I can't drop it, Jerry. Not if we're going to be married. Jerry, it isn't only other people who become alcoholics. Honey, you're way, way overboard. There's nothing wrong with me. Now cut it out. You're making a mountain out of nothing. Are Julie's feelings of concern justified, or is she making a mountain out of nothing? Is it Jerry's drinking that bothers Julie, or is she really worried about his character and personality? And what about the others? The only thing that you can safely say about everybody is that they're different. No one reason explains drinking. Does Doug drink to gain self-confidence? Is there anything wrong with this? Can Claudia's insecurity be the cause of her drinking? What can she do about this if it is? What about the person who drinks to go along with the crowd? At what point do you stop drinking with the crowd and start considering your own need and limitations? Frank feels that a drink or two after work helps him to relax. How far can the need to relax justify drinking? Even though Rudy doesn't drink at all, his attitude towards liquor seems to work quite well for him and for Dolores, his wife. Does his abstinence mean that he has less problems than other people? People drink the way they do because of what they are or what they want to be. Many drift aimlessly into drinking without ever understanding their reasons. 
When people drink without understanding why, they take a chance on giving liquor the upper hand. Will you be one of them? <laughs>